In this video, we go over the difference between Azure Generation 1 and Generation 2 VMs and when to use one over the other. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Have you ever wondered why there are Gen 1 and Gen 2 options on disk images when deploying VMs in Azure? In this video, we're going over what they are and when to use Gen 1 over Gen 2. Before that, please take a second to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. If you'd like to learn about Azure Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Azure Virtual Desktop on udemy.com. Let's get back to it. Azure offers two generations of VM hardware, Generation 1 or Gen 1 and Gen 2. The main difference between these two is the boot architecture. Gen 1 uses BIOS-based architecture, while Gen 2 uses UEFI-based boot. That's actually the biggest difference between the two, but that's a fairly significant difference because it opens the doors to a lot of options and sets some limitations. With a Gen 1 server using a BIOS, the maximum boot disk or C drive on Windows is 2 terabytes. That's due to limitations associated with a BIOS-based boot architecture. With UEFI, the limitation is removed and the boot drive can be up to 4 terabytes in size. There's a catch to resizing the boot drives. Keep watching, I'll go over that in the demo. Gen 2 uses a SCSI controller for the virtual disk, while Generation 1 uses IDE. UEFI and a SCSI boot drive may lead to faster boot times. Gen 2 VMs are available in every region, but not every size is available in every region. Also, not every image is available for Gen 2 hardware. All 64-bit versions of Windows is available for Gen 2, and current versions of Linux and FreeBSD support Gen 2 VMs, but the exact flavor and version of Linux supported will depend on the image available. Gen 2 also supports increased memory, Intel Software Guard extension, and virtual persistent memory. There's no price difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 hardware, so when do you use one over the other? Well, if you need support for a boot disk over 2 terabyte, you'll need to go with Gen 2. The other factor is the availability of the image. While most Azure Marketplace images support both Gen 1 and Gen 2, some third-party images may not support UEFI boot and therefore are limited to Gen 1 hardware. Another reason to go with Gen 2 VMs is Azure Trusted Launch. Now in preview, Trusted Launch is a combination of several security technologies that adds layers of protection against persistent attack techniques. With Trusted Launch, servers are deployed with verified bootloaders, OS kernels, and drivers. Key certificates and secrets are protected in the VM. Trusted Launch also integrates with Azure Security Center. Let's see how to deploy a server with a Gen 2 image and then increase the OS disk to four terabytes. Here we are in the portal, and there's one important thing to know about expanding the size of the OS disk in Azure. The maximum amount of space you can allocate depends on the VM size. All OS disks start with 127 gigs, but you can expand them beyond two terabytes, even for the Gen 1 VMs. So a Gen 1 VM can have an OS disk greater than two terabytes, but because of the limits within a BIOS and the Gen 1 VM, the C drive or the OS drive can only go to two terabytes, even if the underlying virtual disk is larger. Let's take a look. We'll start by deploying a Gen 2 server. We'll create a virtual machine. For this example, I have a resource group already. We'll give the virtual machine a name. Test Gen 2 for this example. Select the region. No infrastructure redundancy is required. And I'll make sure to select a Windows Server 2019 Data Center Gen 2. Let's see, I don't see that in here, so we'll see all images. And there it is. I'll give it a username and password. I'll move on to disks. We can leave that as default and go on to networking. And I'll select an existing VNet and subnet. The rest can be left as is. We don't need anything under management or advanced or tags. Once validation is passed, click Create. This will just take a couple minutes to finish. Okay, that finished. Let's go to the resource. 
And you can see under VM generation, it's listed as V2. In order to change the disk size, this VM has to be deallocated. So I'll do that next. This will shut down and deallocate the virtual machine. All right, it stopped. Let's go to disks. Here you can see the disk size is 127 gigs. So I'll go into the disk. Go to size and performance. And I'm going to the four gig option. Now, if I hit resize, I get an error message. And that's because the max size can be up to four terabytes. So we're gonna change this from 4,096 to 4,095 and click resize and that will update the disk. So we're just under four terabytes. Now, if we go back to overview, we can see the disk size is 4,095 gigs. Let's go back to the server and start it. So we just deployed a Gen 2 VM and changed the default disk from 127 gigs to 4,095 gigs. Let's go to a Gen 1 server next. Here we are in a deallocated Generation 1 VM. Let's change the disk size for this. So we'll go to disks. And here, this one was deployed with a default of 127 gigs. So let's go into that disk. We'll go to size and performance. And just like before, we can't set it for 4096. We can try it, but it'll fail. We have to drop it down to 4095. And resize. If we go back to overview, it now shows 4095 gigs. Okay, that's great. So this is a V1, and as I said before, Generation 1 VMs can't have an OS drive over 2 terabytes. Well, this is almost 4 terabytes, but this is the virtual disk size, not the actual OS disk. Let's log into the server and take a look. Here I am logged into the Gen 1 server. Let's go to Disk Management. And again, the Gen 1 servers use the BIOS to boot. So we right click on the C drive and go to expand. Here it gives us the option to expand out about another 1,967 gigs. And that's the maximum amount we can expand this. Let's go to next, finish. Here you can see the disk has additional free space and we could create another volume but we can't expand the C drive beyond the two terabyte mark. Let's see how this works in a Gen 2 server next. Here we are in the Gen 2 server. And again, this one uses UEFI to boot instead of BIOS. We'll go to disk management. It looks a little different in here. Let's right click on the C drive and go to extend. And now we have the option to expand out another 4,063 gigs. And now our C drive is well beyond that two terabyte mark. That shows the difference in OS disk size options between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 servers. I hope this helps you understand the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 VMs and when to use one over the other. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.